Hello, my energetic beings, and welcome to Meet Me for Coffee. I am your host, holistic medium and subtle energy surgeon. Once again, Tanya D. And thanks for joining me for coffee, tea, or whatever beverage you have of choice. So today's topic is musing is high vibe Merkabahs being the new humans of the 5D earth. So if you have ever wondered why many religions use sacred geometry to depict a connection to the world of spirit, then my guest, Buddhist author Von Galt, will share her 20 years of work collecting scientific evidence, which explains how all the world's religions are all saying the same thing. She's going to explain how everyone is energy and sacred geometry in your own personal Merkaba are Buddhist mandalas. Literally, your Merkaba is your evidence that we are all energetic souls having a human experience. But a lot of people have gotten so caught up in their sims and stories that we forget about the game of samsara, which is life. Sylvan earned her BA from the University of Washington, and she earned her MBA in e-business management from Westwood College of Technology. And aside from writing books on Buddhism, she works in the IT industry, so that's a fun little merge, and she lives in Seattle with her husband and two beautiful young children. So let's welcome Vaughn for a candid conversation on how to use our Merkaba and the energy of the fifth dimension to create wonders in our lives and everyday lives of other people as well. So let's welcome my guest. How you doing? Doing really good, you know, just busy, busy, busy. I mean, I know how to ride the 5D wave. And, and and by the end of this interview, everyone who's watching this will get a little insight on the tools that are available to us here in the fifth dimension and how to use those tools to thrive in your reality. So um, I have a different perspective. My perspective comes from Buddhism and indigenous tribes. And we've been following this my whole life, and it's been going on for thousands of years. We've been waiting for this time that we're in right now. So, um, and that's the perspective that I bring to the table. So, what is a Merkaba Buddhist mandala? Okay, so your Merkaba is very, very simple. And many, many of the world's religions, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, um, Islam, you know, you name it, Um, many of them have been talking about sacred geometry and using um, geometric symbols to portray the same thing, which is your human aura field. So everybody's familiar with the chakras and um, the human aura that everybody has is an energy field. And that's basically what they're talking about is your aura field. Well, um, In Buddhism, we call your aura field your mandala. In Judaism, they call it your merkaba. Um, In Zen, they would call it your yin yang. In um, Native American, they would call it your whirling log for the the way in which it whirls um, and how it moves. Um, They used to call it in ancient times swastika but that's that name has been hijacked by certain groups but it's actually um an ancient word for uh, the same thing in hinduism they would call it your sri yantra so all these different traditions worldwide going as far back um as we know and further have been talking about the same thing which is your human energy field and that's your merkaba and what your merkaba is is um, it's everybody has, and I wrote this in my book, Buddhist Mandalas, and I bring 20 years of scientific evidence from all these different universities and all these different groups that have been studying certain aspects of your Merkaba. And I put all the pieces together to show scientifically that we are all energy. Every single person is energy energy lifetime after lifetime you are your merkaba and your merkaba has an energy field and as you progress 
in your spiritual development, it will get stronger and more condensed um, and more complex. And um, basically your Merkaba is the energetic vessel that takes you from one parallel reality to another parallel reality. So in Buddhism, advanced Buddhism teaches that um, the Merkaba of a teacher typically comes in a circle, a big enso. Okay. So, um, so your teacher typically will be very familiar with parallel realities and how to navigate parallel realities smoothly so that you have the best experience in the reality that you're in. So that, in, I'm not sure if it's short or long, but that in essence is what a Merkaba is. You are energy and it is you. So curious, what is the fifth dimensional energy of this unity consciousness and how do we use it to build happier lives in these troubling times? Yeah, so, um, so a very interesting thing that many people in indigenous cultures worldwide, like Native American and Mayan and Buddhist um, and a lot of Polynesian tribes, Easter Island, all these different um, indigenous tribes worldwide knew this for a very, very long time. It's just the West is not keen to it for whatever reason, but we knew it. And we have been waiting a very, very long time to close out a cycle on earth. And what we did was in a little bit before 2012, but 2012 was kind of the end of it. Um, we did what they call the awakening ceremonies. We did a global awakening ceremonies with, uh, and it was an old folklore that we've been waiting a very long time to do at that time. And basically what the awakening ceremonies um, did is we didn't do anything different. It's just basically we just did our own ceremonies to close out a cycle of energy on earth, which is the cycle of polarity of seeing separatism. We close that out and welcome in a new energy to earth. The new energy that shifted to earth is um, of unity consciousness, of working together, of seeing the oneness in everybody, of seeing collaboration. Now, that's what these indigenous tribes have been waiting thousands of years to do according to their cultures. They didn't know what was gonna happen, how it was gonna happen, but they knew that it, that it separated us from the third dimensional separatism lower frequency and brought in a higher frequency of fifth dimensional energies. And basically this is the new tools that we've had since 2012. It's been happening and it's been happening in slow bits. Now, scientifically, we know um, that there has been an energy change on earth and you can go and see all the research yourself for over 20 years of scientific data at this website called News. Fear, N O O S P H E R E dot Princeton dot edu. And it will have all the research, and you can go geek out all you want on that. And what it's telling you is that um, Princeton University and many other institutions have been monitoring what they call the Schumann resonance, which is the heartbeat of Earth. Okay. Earth has her own heart song. She's a being, she's living. She's responding to things and she might not respond to things that you want her to respond to, but she'll respond to things that she wants to respond to. OK, so um, we don't control Earth. She does what she wants. Now, a couple of different factors factor into the heartbeat of Earth, like um, solar flares, um, different ionosphere and um, dif different things that go into factoring into that. But what we know after ooh, over 20, 25 years of this research, which you can go to the website and see all the different events that they've measured, is that whenever the earth has a spike in her resonance, typically her heartbeat is around 7.83 hertz, she will have a huge spike um, somewhere around the world. And what they did was they put, um, at the time, I think about 70 or, or so random number generators in different parts of the earth all over the world. And what it does is it functions like a seismology instrument that kind of like measures earthquakes when an impending earthquake is going to happen. But 
what it does is just measures the energy field of the chakras of the earth. And um, whenever the earth has a spike in the Schumann resonance and she goes up these high hertzes, they know that within hours, something big is going to happen to that area. And it's and they, it measured 9-11 four hours before it happened in the specific area of where it was going to happen. They measured earthquakes, Hurricane Katrina, um, hours before it happened in the specific area that it was going to happen. And that's been happening all over the world. So one science research after another science research, it's continuing to show that the earth has her own heartbeat and she's responding to things that's happening to her body like tsunamis and earthquakes and so forth. But the interesting thing is um, people like animals also are connected. And like animals, when we feel an impending event is going to happen, we start sending out anxiety like massive amounts of panic and anxiety all of a sudden just comes to us and it's coming to us as a, a group, as a consciousness in different areas. And so our heart is 5,000 times stronger than the energy the field that comes out of our mind. And so when you have millions and millions of people in an area all of a sudden feel instant anxiety about something, the earth is going to feel that magnitude. And if she, they don't know why she responds to some and not others, but they have found that she responds to human events as well. And you can look at all the research on that website, event after event after event. This is the reason why I bring that up, a scientific evidence that um, the earth is climbing into these higher frequencies because she has been climbing since 2012. She, you know, she would climb maybe 20 hertz, 14 hertz, 30 hertz, and they thought that was amazing because she doesn't ever happen. That, that, that doesn't ever happen very much. And they've been researching it for a long time. And it's been a very boring research project. But then after 2012, um, and more recently around coronavirus and this year, um, because it's a worldwide phenomenon, um, see, she has been spiking into the 60s, the 80s, the 100 hertz. It's just crazy, really numbers. And when the, the biggest magnet on earth, which is earth itself, is sending out these huge spikes. All the animals living it, in it have um, a, a, a reaction, which is instant panic. So if you've ever had like all of a sudden, I don't know why I'm so sad all of a sudden. Oh my God, all of a sudden I have this huge anxiety and I don't know what I'm having anxiety about. Guess what? You're feeling the magnet of mother earth. And what is happening is the way that you can understand this is like an analogy. And please stop me if you have any questions. But the way you can understand this is like the analogy of if you're sailing, okay? Um, and this is exactly a really good analogy. So if you're sailing and you're working the way you usually work, it's worked for a long time for you, but then the wind changes, okay? You, at first, the wind is very slow. It's not going to you know, tip you over. So you're not going to notice anything. You're going to continue to sail your life the way you always have been. And then the energy changes and the wind picks up and you have this big whoosh, like this big spike in the Schumann resonance. And you're like, whoa, what was that? You ignore it. Okay. Clean up your stuff. You carry on your life. And then all of a sudden the energy picks up even higher and you have bigger and bigger whooshes. And all of a sudden you're like, I can't steer this boat by myself. I can't do it by myself. I need help. So you have to change the way in which you sail your life. You have to realize that the energy has changed. It's not the same energy. And the energy has changed and is so much stronger, so much faster. You're gonna get to places so much faster with very little effort. But what you have to do is change the way you sail and you have to work with other people, be more in unity. And when you work together and have everybody in their spots, you're going to take advantage of the new tools, which is the higher energies, and those couple knot changes are going to take you from one part of the earth to a completely different part of earth, which is hopefully better if you're working together and you're positive and you're, you know, you're in unison, you're going to be in a different reality, you're going to be in a higher reality, that's the change. 
And if you know how to use these tools that the indigenous cultures have been waiting thousands of years to welcome in this new energy, you're going to thrive when everybody's barely surviving. That's what's happened. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally, um, I asked a question, that same question, like, um, what is the oneness field? And the reason I asked it was because there's a lot of spiritual people that really aren't in the oneness field. So it remains pretty curious for me. And as far as indigenous, like we are literally in a crossroads of shifting and changing. And I think your description of the cell boat was literally perfect in all actuality, right? So, um, What's the interstellar golden age of humanity that Buddhists talk about? Well, this is going into very, very advanced, advanced Buddhism. And it's not just Buddhism. It's Hinduism. It's, um, you know, Native Americans have been talking about star people for a very, very long time. Um, you know, Polynesians have been talking about the ancient civilization of Lemuria and the, the return of the, um, the wise ones. Um, so, you know, a lot of this is in the folklores of many, many ancient cultures and belief systems. So it's not just Buddhism. I just want to preface that. But because Buddhism has a lot of this stored, because we're basically a university of scribes, that the monks are basically students and scribes. And so they just sit there and they write history and they write information and they just add to the canon. So uh, we just continue to fill in the libraries. And that's why we have so much of this information and it's not scattered. But if you look into other indigenous tribes that have were part of the 2012 um, awakening ceremonies, it's much the same information. And basically what it is, is at this time in the higher energy, okay? And I wanna make it very, very, very clear, okay? When 2012 happened, it was not doomsday or anything else. It was the close of a cycle and the welcoming of a new energy. Um, and that new energy, if you know how to use it, it's going to take you into higher, higher realities. Well, just like the sailboat um, analogy, when you have new energy that goes through a river, okay, the river is kind of slow, and then the wind picks up and it goes even faster and faster, and then the, 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 it's a flood, flooding river, the sediments on the ground will consolidate. And they will, you know, they will, they will break up. And any of the gunk on the ground, like old baggage, will be brought back up, okay, and put aside. So the thing is with the new energy, the earth has no opinion on what you do. It's all it's going to do is bring everything up because in the higher energies and in the higher realities it's lighter everything is lighter so you can't carry your 3d baggage with you it's because all it's going to do is bring it up so you have to work on healing your issues you have to work on your dense issues you have to work on the things that you have been struggling with for a long time so at this time if you have baggage that you haven't resolved it's going to be hell on earth for you every single day until you deal with it because it has no opinion on how you use this this these tools okay but if you are a negative person you focus on negativity you focus on the doomsday stuff your life is going to be doomsday until you work on it it's not a punishment it's a gift on the flip side if you have worked on those things and you're working on your inner work and you're working on your wellness and you're working on the footprints to achieve and thrive with these higher energies, it's gonna bring up what you are. And since you have no baggage to bring up, it's just gonna bring up all good stuff. And so things are gonna manifest and be attracted to you so much easier because remember, you're working with the tools of the fifth dimension energy. And so things will be very abundant and you might have the opposite issue, which is you have too much abundance and how do you balance it all? How do you focus? What, what do you pick on? So that's just the, that's the two, for some people at this time during the transition, it's hell on earth. For others, it's heaven on earth and they're building heaven on earth. So you get to pick which reality you want to focus on because it's going to bring it all up for you. This is a choose your own adventure reality. Okay. All the indigenous tribes have been telling people, Ever since the ceremony, it's choose your own adventure. So, so that's exactly what, um, what's going on. Okay, so um, the, 
now that you know how to use the tools, maybe you can work on attracting that better life um, and that better, better reality for yourself. Absolutely. So what resources are available to help everybody address these different issues that this 5D energy is like pulling up for everyone? Yes. Well, um, you're, you're, you as a shaman are the great resource as well. There's a lot of other shamans around the world. There's the kahunas of Hawaii. There is um, shamans in Mongolia. There's shamanism in Asia. There's a, there's a lot of different traditions that offer um, shamanism. And really shamanism is just basically working on your issues so that you know how to better address um, things and work on things. And, you know, I know, you know, Tony, Tanya, you can kind of go further into that, but um, that's a really great resource. Um, there's also a lot of great resources out there. So if, whether you're working on your marriage issues and addressing those things that you've been avoid talking about, there's a lot of counselors. There's so many healing modalities right now. It, you don't even need to create any new healing modalities. Just look really quick Google search and you'll find so many out there. Um, I know Buddhism, we have Reiki, we have Qigong, we have Tai Chi, we have a lot of different ones, but in many other cultures, they also have a lot of different modalities to help you address issues, heal old wounds, and kind of help you focus and move forward. So uh, I'm not going to go through the list because there's just so many resources out there. You just have to know you need some assistance and then go seek and work out the path. And the one that resonates with you is the one that is, that's going to work for you. Just like meditation, there's so many different ways to meditate. But you'll find the one that works for you, um, the one that, that's easy for you to apply in your life. And that's the one that, um, that you keep with. So, Yeah, absolutely. So um, where can people find your products and offerings? Like, so I bought, <laughs> I actually bought both of them. Oh, and I read them all. So um, I think. What I do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Let me get your honest opinion. <laughs> So this was great. I love that you gave examples and different like perceptions, right? Like a, as far as like seeing things with different eyes on different situations, um, whether it's a love relationship, a job, a sister, sibling, whatever, and how those, um, you know, our lessons come to us and create discourse and adversity, basically to get us on path, like something happened, whether it's in this timeline dimension reality or in another timeline dimension reality. You have to clean that up. Um, yeah. yeah. The four double truths and eightfold path is very simple. I mean, and, and you can, anybody can apply it. Like when they look at the basic foundations of Buddhism, they realize that it's not a religion at all. It's just basically a, a bunch of instructions for how to address your dense issues so that you raise your frequency because everybody already came with a high energy field, but then we get born and then we get um, conditioned and we get issues thrown in on us and it just kind of weighs down <laughs> your energy field. So then you grow up and your your big challenge is to try to get rid of this old baggage so you can get back up. So um, that's basically what it is. Right. So um, I like I found your stuff on Amazon. Where else can people find um, other products and things you offer? Just it's all on Amazon. Yeah. Everything's on Amazon and then everything's on. It, it, I only write books. So everything's on Amazon. Um, I actually also do hypnosis and I use the Dolores Cannon modality of hypnosis, which is um, quantum healing hypnosis uh, technique. And um, there's other ones too. There's the Dr. Brian Weiss modality. There's also the National Guild of Hypnotists for, um, you know, typical things like weight loss and smoking. If those are the issues that you're working on, but um but if you're in the Seattle area, I have plenty of clients that come in for um, just trying to, you know, they have they have the time to work on their life right now. And they have dense issues with a childhood um, that's kind of keeps coming back up. And so they would come in and I, I would do hypnosis. And typically it will be shown that um, they've had different past lives with the same soul groups and they're trying to work on the same things and repeating the same mistakes. And so when they see that, they have been doing the same mistakes over and over again with the same souls incarnating in different lifetimes um, into different storylines. And also 
being um, different types of people, they see that um, they haven't learned their lessons. And so they, they address those issues, they work on those issues, and they're much lighter, they're much happier, and they're building with more clarity in their life. Um, and so, you know, you can get that through hypnosis as well. And there's a lot of different hypnosis modalities that can help you with that. But it's all about getting clarity on what your issues are so that you can work on it and then learn not to repeat those um, those bad habits that keep you into uh, those stuck situations where you just feel suffocated. So, I mean, it sounds like uh, like everybody has a shadow work, right? You have to work through all your shadows. And like, I, for me, it's like stepping out of a movie and watching things through a whole different dimension or a different field, which I'm sure sounds pretty out there, but that's no, not- it's actually not out there at all. Um, when you get into spirituality, and I know, I know, Tanya, you you are familiar with this with your clients as well. When people get into the spirituality, um, their six senses that they were born into will start amp- will f- start activating or reactivating, especially if they suppressed it after they grew up and they maybe had some some of those um, skill sets when they're younger. Um, they'll reactivate and then they will amplify as they work more on their inner work. So typically people think that when they're doing spirituality work, um, it's going to be, you know, rainbows and butterflies and you're going to fart rainbows and your confetti is going to come out of your mouth all the time and it's love and light all the time. and You never see a shadow ever. And then and then you realize why is all this dense stuff coming up? Well, spirituality work is it's bringing up your dense stuff so that you can address it so that you don't have anything weighing down your energy. And then when you address it, then what you could do is you can build positive things into your reality and amplify those positive things. And so a lot of inner work, um, self-help work actually raises your frequency so that you you know how to um, create and manifest with clarity and with focus and there's nothing blocking that. So you're not going to get in your own way. So it's going to manifest so much faster in these higher energies, much faster. I mean, you'll think that you need to get something and then somebody will knock on the door and sell you exactly what you think you're going to need. <laughs> so that's fast manifestation because these, these higher energies. Um, so don't get spooked out when you start seeing your six senses because they're actually very, very normal and they're very, very natural. So it's like you never you live in the dark for so long and you didn't know that you were living in the dark. And all of a sudden somebody shone a light at you and you saw your own shadow. Don't be scared of your own shadow. I, I find it I like I see a lot of um, spiritual people that um, really need to work on their shadows. Hence oh my, my goodness. Oneness build, right? So I see a lot. Right, right. You always get the news, one pastor or one bishop, and all of a sudden it's like all this stuff comes and you're like, wow, well, you, that's a big shadow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's curious to me because it's like, wow, was that part of the oneness field that you were in? Like, where were you resonating or where was that triggered? What timeline do you need to clear up? So, I, I mean, that's why I liked watching everything from a movie, I really feel like I'm like in this old ancient one anyway, but yeah, to watch the world from a movie perspective, I always kind of think, I just think it's the, it really is the oneness field, how I look into things and whether people are either at a crossroads that they need to clear up, or maybe they're not in the flow with the river, maybe they're stagnant. There's, you know, there's a plethora of different things that happen for us, but, um, so is there anything else you'd like to share with uh, my audience? Well, you know, I mean, you know, I, I just, you know, I want to really clarify because, um, you know, when people get into the space, it's really easy to kind of get caught up with this person and that person and this person's teaching, and that person's teaching and, you know, all these different things and your head can kind of spin. Um, and, you know, if you had spent your whole life following uh, the man at the podium at church or something, and then all of a sudden you are thinking for yourself, you don't want to get back into that that habit of finding somebody else to follow and basically give your power away to, okay? So um, if you're going to find a modality or a teaching that works for you, the ones that um, 
are really there to teach you the material and then leave you alone and let you learn without holding your hand. Those are the really good ones. The teacher always wants the student to um, basically become its own teacher. Okay, they don't want you to follow them around. <laughs> they don't want you to worship them. Those are the true teachers. Okay, so um, so because I've, I've I've come across some of these people who um, they just look they don't want to take ownership of their own creation and their own reality. So and you do in these higher energies, if that is the lesson that you still need to learn, it is going to backfire on you. Okay, and your favorite guru is going to break your heart because <laughs> they're not perfect. So, but the thing that um, people, especially in the West, because these are buzzwords like awakening and ascension and the fifth dimension, these are buzzwords and everybody has their own opinion and philosophy behind it. And that's fine. Because remember, ever since 2012, is choose your own reality. So if you feel like you're in this reality or that reality, that's fine. That's your journey. Um, and there's a lesson in there for you to learn. Um, but for indigenous tribes and um, ancient traditions like Buddhism and Hinduism and you know all these ancient tribes, awakening simply is someone who realizes that they exist in a holographic reality that's responding to the commands of his user, which results in conscious creating, both individually and collectively. Okay, so test this out for yourself. Even in Buddhism, Buddha is a Sanskrit word for Bud, which means to be awake within the matrix. Okay, so test this out for yourself. Focus on something, think about it, feel it and then work do the work and see what happens and in and before you know it, you're sort of seeing reality kind of is much more malleable it's basically trying to give you what you want so know what you want um it, it, that's simply what awakening is and then ascension okay um there's a lot of people in this space who will use it for a lot of different things but i'll just clarify what the indigenous belief of ascension is it simply means raising your energetic frequency by being the best version of you. And as a result, you positively affect yourself and you can't help but affect those around you. So all you're doing is you're leveling up the energy field of your Merkaba, of your mandala. That's all you're doing. So, um, so that there is no place to go. There is no one who's responsible for your ascension. It is you changing your own energy field through your doing your own inner work okay so you don't need to pay a thousand dollars for somebody to get your ascension for you so <laughs> or go and spend like five grand for awakening right. <laughs> anything like that okay you do this this is your reality you are the creator of your own reality okay this is choose your own reality you will create it and the tools all around you. So um, so just be wary of, of um, those gimmicks because they don't know that, that the awakening and ascension are simple things that everybody can do. And in the East, we've known about it for thousands and thousands of years. Even longer than that, a lot of the um, belief systems and knowledge about this goes all the way back to ancient folklores of Lemuria. Okay, I'm not going to get into Lemuria because that's in my other book that I'm working on. <laughs> I really want to get to that one. But, um, but yeah, that's, that, that's basically that. And then the fifth dimension, don't believe in any of the stuff that says it's a place to be. You have to go there. You got to get in a wagon. You, <laughs> there's some place to travel to. That's third dimensional thinking of physicality. Okay. For indigenous people, it is a change in energy of the earth, a change in the tool set, recognizing that wind has picked up speed. That's all it is. And when you know that the wind has picked up a lot of speed and you know how to use the tools appropriately, if you're in the water, 
going to have a much, much more pleasant time sailing that race or going on that trip or whatever, because you go, oh, my God, we have so much more wind here. Let's go to the Bahamas that way. <laughs> You're going to have a great time because you know how to use the tools. And that's all it is. The fifth dimension is an energy which takes you to a parallel reality that manifests faster and higher. And when reality changes to a higher frequency, because you are working on your energy and you're at a higher frequency, negative stuff cannot last in those higher dimensions, okay? If you're working, if you're using these tools correctly, you're gonna thrive right now because we're already in the fifth dimension. All the indigenous tribes have been telling everybody since 2012 and a little bit before that, we're in the fifth dimension. But like I said, the wind picked up speed slowly, kind of help you adjust. And now it's picking up big wind whooshes. Okay. So all those panic attacks are those whooshes. Okay. So um, we're already there, but you're still acting like you're in the third dimension. So that's fine. It's choose your own reality. But if you're still acting in a lower lower level existence, low vibe existence, you're going to create more of that because more of that low vibe stuff is going to come up to make you deal with it because you can't take it with you and to show you how to use these higher energy tools to your advantage. It is a gift of easy manifestation. But you have to know how to use the energy. Absolutely. It's kind of like the, um, the laws of the universe or universal law and frequency. It's just shifting in vibrations and the frequencies that you frequent. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah. And I want, I want, I, I think I skipped out the question about the interstellar because um, I, I don't think I properly answered that. So in the lines of the, the higher frequency and the higher energies, when the, the, the prophecy, the belief system has been going back to, um, to Lemuria folklore <laughs> is that higher frequency beings are incarnating at this time. You're going to have a lot of old souls. Your children and your grandchildren are old, old souls. They come with knowledge that nobody taught them. They come with high IQs. They come with wisdom that's beyond your grandparents' wisdom, okay? They're old ancient souls. The wise ones have come back and they're your children and your grandchildren. Now given, they're still children, so they still need to get up, brush their teeth, go to school and do the, you know, learn how to get potty trained. So they're still children, but they will have moments where you see a glimmer of that high vibe soul inside them. OK, that that is what is coming in more into the fold. And what we are doing is just setting up the foundation and learning to use these high, higher frequency energies um, to manifest faster. And we're building the foundations and the fifth dimension doesn't just exist in like one lifetime. It's a couple lifetimes and we're building it. And so we're going to address um, one, some of the things that we've been struggling to do for a long time is we're going to address the need for survival. Everything that we do is based on survival. Got to go to work all the time. I got to make the money to pay the bills. I can't marry that person that doesn't make enough money, even though I love him. Oh, I can't hang out with those people. They're low vibe. They don't make enough money. I, I'm, they're going to ruin my reputation. You know, almost every single thing that you do and you make choices on is based on survival and finances. If you think about it, it really is. From the people that you associate with, to the people that you love, to, um, to where you live, to what kind of car you drive, to what kind of house you pick, to what kind of food you take. I mean, it all bases on survival. And the children, these high vibe old souls that are here now, you and I, and the ones continue to come in are going to work together in these higher energies because they're not attracted to that low vibe negative thinking. It doesn't resonate with them because they're too high vibe. And so they don't need to unlearn that stuff because they're not even going to be interested in that kind of stuff. 
that we're interested in the higher stuff. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to transcend survival. We're going to make um, a system where everybody in the world is fed and sheltered. Everyone in the world um, has a pleasant life. Now, you know, there isn't going to be a need for billions and trillions of dollars in the bank because that is not what people are going to um, measure their worth from. They're going to measure the worth off of um, how spiritual are you? What is your Merkaba? How what what does your Merkaba look like? What what is it? What is it radiated? Or how how far are you in the um, in reaching Nirvana or Buddhahood? You know they're going to th- those are the stuff that they're going to be interested in because we're going to create technology and systems where we can we can make our own gold and diamonds. Perfect. We can teleport wherever we want. We can anything in the physical we could do, and it's like Star Trek. So when all the physical material stuff is easily replicated and created, then what? How are we going to evaluate our worth besides our inner wellness and our spiritual development? That's where we're going. Okay. And that's when we get there and we get to that part of society, we're so high vibe as a society that other beings in other galaxies will take notice and go, I want to make contact with this society because right now we're too low vibe we're still early in the um, fifth dimension, but as we raise our frequency up, we're going to get to a part of reality where they see us and we see them. And we can finally have um, an interstellar galactic humanity. And it, this world is going to be completely different in 100 years. Okay. You won't have 60-year-old men marrying 20-year-old virgins <laughs> or whatever crazy thing like that you won't have that stuff because a 60 year old man and his money is not going to make any difference because it's like well how spiritual are you you know women are not going to be dating based off of can you can you take care of me i totally agree it's totally i'm saying in seven years though i think (laughs) that would be great in seven years uh the jetsons meet george jetson Anyway, so yeah, yeah, and you know, and that's the thing, and you know what, we're already preparing the kids, and and if 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 you just if you just take a moment away from your life, and you look at the cartoons and shows that your children are watching, a lot of their cartoons are are preparing them for their future current reality. So if you look at it, you see portals, <laughs> you see um, different alien beings who are their friends. You see flying cars, you see all these different things. And this is normal. And my daughter always like, you know, mom, I don't know why we're taking planes. Why don't we just get a porter to go to on vacation? And I'm like, because you guys haven't built them yet. <laughs> okay. They're coming. Don't worry about it. But the children are are already there and they're waiting for it. And um, and you know, they're just trying to catch up their parents or their grandparents. So um, but the thing is is that we're going to, you know, we for many people who are working on creating a high vibe life of these higher energies, um, we have a wonderful reality currently that you can make more wonderful if you know how to use the tools. Um, you can make your life very easy, very pleasant. Um, but as we go further into the fifth dimension and Earth is going further into it because she keeps taking those huge spikes and huge energy leaps. So there's nothing that you could do to stop it, that she's going to do what she's going to do. You're just an aspect living on her. So might as well know how the ride is going to go. So um, <laughs> I tell people don't want to hear this. It's too happy, too positive. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I absolutely love it. And it's so true. That's why, like, when I was talking about the oneness field, I'm like, because my, my, I don't frequent that frequency of what some people are putting out there, right? So I, I kind of just stay within my own little bubble, I guess is what I would call it. My own little private Merkaba and do my thing. And I, I prefer to be there. I'm into nature. I have my rituals. I do my offerings. So I totally resonate with what you're saying. It's just looking through different eyes on a reality that ultimately we decide it's our own creative journey. Yeah. 
Yeah, we really do. Yeah. Um, and just so that everybody knows, you can actually see what your Merkaba looks like right now. There is um, a scientific company called Sound Made Visible, S-O-U-N-D, Made, M-A-D-E, Visible, V-I-S-I-B-L-E, so soundmadevisible.com. Um, that's the commerce site, and it was developed by some engineers. They do harmonics and frequency research for um, medicine. Um, and I followed their research for over 15 years. And in the last couple of years, they made their um, their technology available to the public to see their voice mandala. So like your voice has its own um, energy signature and it they can image it. Like you say your voice and they can image it. So let me show you, I emailed you what mine looks like. Can you pull that up really quick? Uh, check the email really quick. You did it recently? Yeah, yeah. Just check the last email I sent you. Um, there's a, a image attached in there. Oh, good Lord. Come on. But while you're pulling that up, um, let me just tell you what everybody's going to see. So if you're curious to see what your Merkaba looks like, like what does your mandala look like? Remember your Merkaba is your mandala. If you're curious about your mandala looks like, you can go to that website. I think right now it's like $144. It's a great Christmas present as we're getting into the holidays. Um, for the spiritual people who have no need for anything, this is something that they would really, really love. So uh, my husband and I, we got ours um, image. So we just, what you do is you just basically record your voice and your voice has a unique energy signature. It has its own frequency, okay? And that voice will image a mandala and everybody's voice is unique, just like snowflakes are unique. So um, when I said my name, Vaughn, and then I said some other words like ooh, ah, uh, um, um, and some other ones. Then um, this is the image that came through. My husband's and I are very, very close. He, his is, is, is not that far off of mine as well. And actually I've done past life regression and my husband and I have been married many, many times. And um, we have been many different versions of people we've been like I've been I was a slave he was um you know a Chinese man I mean we've been a lot of different versions of humans and had different storylines but lifetime after lifetime we carry our energy field and our signature and we just continue to work on ourselves and try to manifest the best life that we can create and that gets held in your Merkaba. Do you got it up there? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Dun, da, da, da. Okay. So you're looking at Vaughn. This is what Vaughn looks like. This is my Merkaba. This is my mandala. So um, in, in ancient times, in Buddhist um, monks and nuns, what they would do is they use singing bowls and they would chant. And then they would see like kind of like sand plates or like um, in water, they would see the image of the of the mandala and they would quickly try to draw the image of mandala. And, that, and that's how they would know what the mandala looks like for different monks and nuns. Well, in the modern time, we have technology that does this. And Cymoscope is a wonderful company that has been doing this for um, using sound frequencies to help in medicine. And they provide the service where now they can image your mandala or your voice DNA voice signature um, using their system. And everybody has a unique one. So when I say Vaughn with my voice, my name is Vaughn, this is the exact image it translates to. And for a Buddhist author, I was very happy to see that because um, like my whole life, I've had, um, you know, my family... We go to a lot of different monasteries to help support and, and all that kind of stuff. So oftentimes one of the common things that would happen is I would go in with my parents and in the middle of the chants, the senior monk would um, typically stop and let the student monks carry on the chant and they would look around to find out who just walked in. And typically it was me, it was a young girl and uh, most of them kind of shook it off or some of them would ask, um, you uh, do you have something to teach us? And I, I, being a little girl, I'm like, no, I have nothing to teach you. I'm just a little girl. I want to play. So 
and they're like, okay, no worries, no worries. But you'll eventually come to your own teaching. And basically, um, when the monks saw what my mandala looked like, they were really, really happy to see that they were right all along. And basically, um, my mandala has the embodiment signature of Buddhism itself. So if you look at all Buddhist artwork, going all the way back to the Vedas of Hinduism, um, Emperor Asok Asoka um, in India, there is the eight wheel rod. Okay, so th this has eight, eight rods. That's the wheel of Dharma. That is the, the coming back lifetime after lifetime, doing one experience after another experience for whatever you know, enjoyment or lesson or whatever. But that's the eight wheel rod of Dharma. Um, at the top of the spokes is the lion's head. And each spoke has a lion. So my voice has a lion, each one. And it's like the lion's roar in Buddhism. Um, so there's, there's that. Now, the different, lay, the different lines, um, this is a two-dimensional um, option. And actually, it's in my book. But everybody's voice is actually a bubble. It's a three-dimensional bubble. But if you cut it in half, then you can see what your mandala looks like. But I have 12 intersecting nodes um, in my, my mandala. And those are different lines. And the, in Buddhism, that's the 12 Nanandas, the 12 characteristics that cause samsara, that cause you to come back into the wheel of Dharma to experience another cycle of life and experience another journey. So, um, so it's funny that um, when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, I gotta show the monks that. And they were like, we knew it all along, we knew it all along. And they're like, you're a teacher, we knew it, you were a teacher. And all the stuff, that um, that I have to teach is in the book Buddhist Mandalas, which is um, which is my twenty year research project on how all these religions are talking about the same thing, which is that you are energy, you are a soul having a human experience. And so lifetime after lifetime, you may change your form, your sim, if you, for, for video gamers, they understand this. You can say, change your sim, you can change your character, you can change your storyline, but lifetime after a lifetime, you're the same soul. And this is what Sacred Jami is telling you. Wow, that's so cool, I love yeah. it. So it's lots of, it's lots and lots of fun. My husband's basically looks like the sound of music <laughs> with lines on the end of it. <laughs> so but um but there are many people who have very, very high calibrating advanced Merkabas. Okay. That's so, so so there are lots and lots of teachers among us, and the information and resources are all around us. And the whole point of this whole thing is to just live the best version of you and enjoy um, creation because you are an aspect of um, consciousness itself. And consciousness is having its own experience through you. And he wants to see, you know, if you have the tools to create your own reality, what kind of reality will you create? absolutely that's basically it it's very simple there's no clubs to join there's no churches to join there's no one to pay your tidings to <laughs> there's no one to worship you're it baby <laughs> what do you want to do now <laughs> i love it love it, love yeah. it. <laughs> cool okay well thanks for joining me for meet me for coffee i'm going to have all the links in the show notes for you and you definitely want to connect with vaughn i'll even have the links for these merkabas and I will, as always, see you on the other side. Ashe!